All right, welcome back to another exciting edition of NCC's CNC lathe programming setup and operation. With you as always, Mr. Brian Bush, your instructor. So today we're going to talk about the G90 command. So on the lathe, the G90 is now a CAN cycle. It is no longer the G code for absolute programming. Because as we learned earlier, the way to toggle between absolute and incremental on the lathe is just by using the U and W. So what we're looking at here is a simple part. It's got a taper to it. Now, when you guys do your project in this for the uh, PTA bushing part, it's just a simple straight part with no taper. They give an example of a taper here, and I'll show you how to designate that taper. So if we're looking at the program, program name, max spindle speed, change tool, in-state tool length compensation right here, and they're moving to a safe point outside the part ahead of time, turning on CSS, and then right here is the, the CSS. So right now they are starting outside of the part ahead of time. So somewhere out in here. You don't have to start these at Z0 necessarily or Z positive necessarily. If the machining happens back here you'll just want to start it where you need it to start and approach your part. And then so here's the can cycle itself here's the G90 line you see that they're turning on tool nose compensation and then within this can cycle the X is where you want to start turning at so they actually want to start turning at X of 2.55 which you'll see is what they're doing is they're machining this taper here they're not actually going all the way outside on this part so they're going basically from here and machining down. So how does the eye work out? The eye is that if you're doing a taper, well we'll back up a second, then the Z within this is how far back you want it to machine. So you have Z negative 1.5, although it's not showing on the print here, this point would be at the Z negative 1.5 position. So the I value, the I value is the radial difference in the taper. So if I open up my calculator here, and I take the beginning taper of x 2.3476 and subtract that from the end minus 0.5 equals now it's the radial value that was a diametral value so I'm going to just divide that by 2 equals 0.9238 so we'll you look down here, the I is 0.9238. Makes sense, right? So that I, if you don't have a taper, leave the I out. But if you do have a taper, the taper is the radial difference between the start and end point. So then the Z is just the point at which the, the taper or the cut ends in the Z. And then from here on out, what you're doing is you're calling X coordinates. So the good thing about uh, this can cycle is that you can take free passes and as we learned before sometimes it's necessary to take free passes so that you can get accurate coordinate or accurate diameters when turning things because of tool deflection so if I wanted to run x 2.5 more times I would just have x 2.45 afterwards so when the can cycle over they're canceling cutter comp moving away from the part turning the spindle off going home. So ahead of time I went ahead and put this in NC plot. And uh, you can see NC plot does not do the taper value unfortunately so I might as well just get rid of that. Obviously when you stick this in the machine you want to set, you'll want to graph this ahead of time. You'll also want to have run this in your immersive simulator you can see here I made some changes I simply just added some X coordinates here so each time what it's gonna do is it's gonna back up to that safe point and then come in and turn that pass down unlike the G70 G71 we don't have a decode in here because we're determining 
what the x value is we're turning to. So let's just animate this here. You'll see it step through. So each time it's going to that next planned x coordinate and then going home. So from now, now on this is how I want you guys to go home. Right down here. Use that one shot modal code G0, G53, go home in the X first, go home in the Z second. So really you should do this at the beginning of your programs and when you change tools. So at the beginning of all your programs you want to know that turret's in a safe place and at the end of your programs you want to know that that turret is in a safe place. So this concludes the lesson on the G90 code. If you uh, you should know how they operate, what the X coordinate means within the code, what the Z coordinate means within the code, what the I coordinate would mean if you had a taper, and obviously you have to have a feed rate. So there on out your column X's. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned about CNC lathe programming. Alright, I just want to take a second to show you what you'll be working on here. For this assignment you need to do use a G90 to create this part. This part will be made out of UHMW which is a, a type of slippery plastic basically. So you're going to turn the diameter here, the large diameter, and you're also going to turn the smaller diameter. You'll be doing this with G90, so you'll need to G90 this diameter back to that Z depth, and you also need to G90 this diameter back to this Z depth, and then come in and do your chamfers here and here and here. You'll need to part it off. Now you should be able to just use a G1 with the parting tool. Remember that typically you're touching off the left hand side of your parting tool. So therefore if that's an eighth inch parting tool you'll have to add that to your overall length. So you'd program that parting tool to come back to 1.875 and then feed in at let's say five thousandths per rev until this comes off. So you may want that Z when you're parting also sorry, x to be a negative, so you may say x negative point zero six two five, that's where you're sure it comes past center line and knocks that part off there. So after that's been parted, you want to send it back out, so feed it back out g1 x two point at let's say ten thousandths per rev, then you go g0 g53 x0 g0 g53 Z0 and it will home. Along with this I want you to sub program. You'll have one program that does the turning and you'll have another program that does the bar pulling. And I'll explain to each one of you the bar pulling. But the bar pulling program you'll have to turn on feed per minute mode. Come in, feed into your part, grab it. There's an M code that opens a chuck so you'll open the chuck and you'll feed the part out however far you want to feed it out and then you'll reclamp the chuck and then you'll feed back off the part go home in the X and Z and then restart your program again it tells you down here what to do you need to make five of them this needs to be semi automated using the bar puller the easiest way is just to write a separate bar pulling program where you can manipulate your X and Z and call that program from a main program and then also have another sub program that just would do the turning. Pay attention to your tolerances here. They are plus nothing minus something so they're unilateral tolerancing. I'm going to measure these when you're done. If they're not all five within tolerance then you get a big fat zero for this project. Good luck.